praise God. It's a blessed, it's my pleasure to be here another Sunday again with you on this program. God has been good. God is good. He will continue to be good. Today we're going to talk on the unknown God. That will be our topic today. But before I go any further, permit me to read from the book of Acts chapter 17 uh, from verse 22 to verse 24. And it reads like this. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too suspicious, superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all therein, all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and of earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Father, I thank you for your word. For you said your word is forever settled in heaven. Father, I pray today that you will use these lips to proclaim your word today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To the unknown God. Sometimes we think that, hey, we know somebody. In fact, it's one thing to know about somebody. But it's a totally different thing to know somebody. For example, you can say that you know the Prime Minister. It's one thing to know that he is the Prime Minister. But it's another thing to say you have a personal relationship with the Prime Minister. You know his likes, his dislikes. You know how he gets up in the morning, what type of coffee he likes, what type of uh, meat he likes on his bread. There is a difference between knowing about somebody and knowing somebody. Here is Paul in Athens. And after paying attention to how they worship, he came up with this notice. He, in fact, noticed this specific uh, statue or this specific thing they put, claiming that this will be to the unknown God. Mind you, the men at Athens at that time, you had some men who sat around all day discussing ideas. Some come up with new theories as the day goes on. And when Paul came preaching Jesus Christ and his resurrection, they took note because it could be a new doctrine. It could be a new philosophy. So they took note because at that time, in the discussion around Athens, men will only sit and discuss different types of doctrine. And here is Paul observing one of their, 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 their statues or one of their ordinances saying, This altar is made to the unknown God. The God that just in case he is there and we have not as yet observed him as one of our gods. This altar should be unto the unknown God. And Paul took the time to explain to these men, I notice that you are suspicious. You have things put aside as gods. You have people set up as gods. But there is one God that is above all the other gods. There is one God that is greater than all the other gods. And by chance, if you are set up this altar to that God and you don't know who that God is, I'm here to declare him unto you. You see, as I said before, knowing about somebody is different to knowing somebody. For those of you who are married or maybe in a relationship, 
I remember over 25 years ago when I met my wife. Knowing her in the way that I know her now, it's two different things. Up until the time she became my wife, I knew about her. I got so close, I knew what she liked and what she disliked. But when I became, when we became husband and wife, and I became a husband, I realized knowing my wife brings you to a different understanding of the woman. God wants you not to only have a head knowledge of him. God wants you to know him personally. In fact, I could even go on to say that, hey, these people, they did not realize who this God was. They did not realize who this God was. The Bible tells us in the book of John, John chapter 1 and verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, I am here to declare to you that Jesus is God. The God that you don't know is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells you that the same was in the beginning with God. Jesus Christ, the man who Paul declared unto the men at Athens, is the same God I'm declaring unto you today. You need to know him. Why? Because this God, as Paul declared, he has the power of resurrection. When Paul mentioned the word resurrection, they began, or became very superstitious. Since the, the term, men, you are so superstitious. Because I said he, arose, he rose again from the dead. You pull your ears closer. Not to hear that what he is or what to get to know him. But to see the miracles. And a lot of people get tied up with the miracles. Get tied up with the fancy things around Christianity. We get tied up with how they sing. How they praise, how they speak in tongues. But sir, it's more than that. Getting to know God is getting to know Jesus Christ. You see, the reason for this is because Jesus had to pay a price for man's sin. We do all of this in order to get or find our way back to God. We need to know him because in every man's heart has a desire, a longing for the almighty God. Therefore men go on searches. Just like these men in Athens then, men will go on searches to find a God. But we present unto you not a God, but the God. You see, this God... Realize that man have sinned. Realize that man is feeble. Realize that man is weak. The Bible tells us even from the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ was crucified for the sin of man. Sir, that God we are presenting unto you, realize that man will need a savior. Therefore, when the fullness of time came, the Bible says, born of a woman, made under the law to redeem us who are under the law. So the law only brings death. Therefore, to redeem us from death, the word redemption means to buy back someone who is lost, deep in sin, you can be bought back. The God or the unknown God that we present unto you gave his son for you and I. As I was alluded to a little few moments ago, sin was what separated us from this no unknown God. Sin is what separated us from the love of this unknown God. But because of his love, he sent his son to die for you and for I. Jesus came.
Jesus died. Sir, it was not an easy thing to do. It was not the only thing that could, 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 could keep you in the state you are in, which is sin. But God realized that man needed it. This unknown God, whom we ignorantly worship, we set up in our churches and we say, all right, today we're going to praise God. And maybe some of us do, some of us don't. But for some of us who don't know, I'm here to let you know he is available. You do not have any longer to go around in ignorance. Who you ignorantly worship, uh, uh, Paul says, because they believe that there must be a God. You see, I, fear, I realize that a lot, of, a lot of us will say, hey, there is no God. A lot of us will say, well, if he was God, the world will not be in the situation or the condition it's in. So, if it wasn't a God, you would not have been alive today, madam. When you look around and you've seen what had happened to you and how you, God brought you through. So, there must be a God. And moreover, sir, because of man's condition, this God... Send Jesus. He died. But what is more important in the whole conversation is this. Not that he died only. Not that he was buried only. But the fact remains that this God came back to life. The God that I preach to you is not a God that is dead and buried. It's not a God that has hands and can't move them. That has ears and cannot hear them. The Bible says he even is can be touched with your infirmities. He has feelings. He can feel your heart's cry. The God I'm talking about, the Bible tells us that he rose again from the dead. Why should that be important? It is important because the unknown God that we speak about, he is alive. He's not dead and in a grave anywhere. But I know that the Bible says he's alive, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. Sir, he's crying out for you. Madam, that God that you don't know, maybe you've known about it since Sunday school. You heard things about this God. But I'm here to let you know that God is still alive. He rose again from the dead. And sir, the thing about it is that the story does not end there. The God who is the unknown God to a lot of us, he made a promise. So, in fact, when he made the promise, he said, I will go away, but I will come again. The promise is made to everyone that believes in this unknown God. Everyone who believes that this God that who seems to be unknown is real in my heart. To everyone that believes he is coming back again. You see, it's been over 2,000 years and some people feel that this God is troubled by time. This God is troubled by age, but I'm here to let you know, as Paul says, the God that made the heavens and the earth. Examine the gods that we serve today. Can any one of them be compared to him? The Bible says he formed the earth. He spoke into being and there was. The God that I declare unto you is the God of creation. The God that knoweth all things and doeth all things well. This God made a promise to come again. And so, madam, I'm here to let you know that that unknown God that they testified about at Mass Hill, that same God is going to come again. Not because, you see, the thing about it is that not because you don't know something, it won't happen. I learned of a storm, just uh, a new storm just the other day. When I learned about it, it all, had all, almost passed. But it doesn't change the fact that it was there, whether I knew about it or not. 
So the fact that God is alive and well, the unknown God, whether you believe him or not, that doesn't change the fact that he is God. So the truth is, he is. And not only he is God, he's a loving God. He's a God willing that none should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. This God who had promised in the beginning, this God is able to perform it. You see, sometimes we only depend on God or know about God when not in our crisis, in our dire situation. Some of us will call. I heard a story about one man. He said, there is no God. But when he walked down the road and bounced his toe, the first thing he said is, oh God. Some of us try to use this unknown God conveniently. But God is not there only for your convenience. God is not there only when you are in trouble only. Although he promised his saints that he will be there in the time of trouble. But some of us refuse to believe in this unknown God as spoke about at Mars Hill. We refuse it. We refuse him. But only on the day of trouble. I remember looking at a program on television. And I heard this man mention God so many times. Because the police came to arrest him. And he said, oh God, oh God, can, I, can you help me? Oh, I'm in so much trouble. And that's the only time he didn't recognize before that he will need God. He did not recognize before his trouble that, hey, there is a God. But when his day of trouble came and the police came to arrest him, he then realized that there is a God. So many people today in our world only know or recognize or refer to the unknown God when they are in trouble. So the thing about it is from the day you were born you were in trouble. Hmm. Sin is the biggest monster in the world. It's not the criminals. It's, it's, it's not the government. It's not the police. The biggest, the biggest problem is sin. And this unknown God dealt with sin. He dealt and he's still dealing with it today. I don't know which part of the spectrum you may be on. I don't know which part of the scale you may be on. But for some of you, you need to put your faith and your trust again in this God. You need to put your faith and your trust again. You see, some of you believed in this God for a while. And you find that, hey, the problems are still there. Or you say the situation seems non unending. And sometimes you drift away from the known and to the unknown. But here am I to let you know the God that Peter presented that day is the same God that will and can intervene in your situation today. If it's sickness, he can intervene. So if it's financial problems, he will love to intervene. So uh, whatsoever your situation is, he wants to intervene. But you need to give him a chance. You need to give him a chance to do so. You can't say, all right, I know him, I know he can, but I'm going to handle this one by myself. So you can't handle it by yourself. You can't deal with it by yourself. Sometimes and most times you need somebody bigger than you. In fact, I remember when I was in school, I didn't have a bigger brother or a bigger sister to, to, to defend me sometimes. And I, I, I am still small in stature. And even back then I was smaller. And sometimes you'll need somebody that you could cry to. Somebody that could take you and cover you. I remember that uh, one in incident that I got my, 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 my licking from a, a, a female back in those days. 
days and I couldn't tell anybody. I couldn't complain to anybody. I had no bigger brother or sister to complain to. Sir, but I'm here to tell you in Jesus Christ, you have a big brother. You have somebody you can turn to when the storms becomes too much, when the world becomes or the burden becomes too heavy. This unknown God, this unknown God is able. This unknown God is well able to take care of you. Today, your problems might seem too much. But this God, this God I present unto you, this God who had made heaven and earth, that is no ordinary God. The God that formed you from nothing. In fact, he said he knew you even in your mother's womb. That's the type of God I'm presenting unto you. Not a God who is occasional. A God that wants to be within and in every one of your situations. The God that Paul spoke about is no jokey God. He's not a God on an altar waiting for you to bring them some milk. No, this God is willing to do it for you. And as I said before, the greatest thing that this God wants to do in and for you is the salvation, is to work salvation in your life. He don't want you to be ignorant. He don't want you to go away this Sunday without the knowledge that he is. He don't want you to leave this television without understanding that this God that was spoken about so many times before, he is a present help. This God I present unto you. Today, I know you've listened to me and you still think that, hey, I still can't understand it. You see, for to understand God is the simplest thing. You just have to let him be God. He doesn't need your help to be God. Sometimes we try to help God. The thing that God wants from you is just for you to surrender to him. This unknown God who is known to you today all he wants is for you to surrender your life to him. He can make the difference, but you have to surrender. It's like somebody drowning. In fact, I could t tell about one incident, incident with me in particular. A friend, uh, a man was drowning, and I went to try to save her. But before I could approach her, I asked her in many ways. I said, you need to calm yourself. You need to surrender and let me hold you. If you try to hold me, it will be problems. And so many times, instead of us surrendering to God, allowing God to do it, we try to do it for God. I'm here to let you know. There's somebody in this audience there's somebody who just needs to surrender to this God you tried so hard to do it on your own Christianity is not about how much you can do but it's what God can do through you it's time to surrender it's time to give up to that unknown God whom I declare to you today that not that he's like something in the air out there, but he is a present help. He can take care of you. He is the one willing to take care of you. You need to release. You need to open up. You need to let this God have a chance in your life. Sir, today, madam, you heard this word. And you are that person, you know you need to surrender your life to God. You need to surrender your will to God. I want to pray for you. I really want to pray with you. Just reverence God with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, the God that who was in the beginning, the Bible tells us that he is the word. He was there in the beginning. That word became flesh and dwelt 
among us. That word died for us. That word was buried for us. That word rose again. That word promised that he will come again. Father, in the name of Jesus. You see that man and that woman, that boy, in the name of Jesus, as they surrender their whole hearts to you, Father, I pray, Lord God, that the peace of God come in and dwell on their hearts. In Jesus' name. You're there out there listening and you're sick. I just want to take the time also to pray for you because this same God, this same God says, I am able to heal to the uttermost. I don't know what your condition is. I don't know what your illness is. But I know that this God can do it. Just reference God with me. In fact, just place your hand right on that spot of your, in, on, on your body that you need prayer for. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see, Lord God, you know the situation. Father, I cannot understand sometimes or may not even know the depth of the problem. But Father, what I know is that you are God. So Father, now I pray healing in the name of Jesus. Deliverance right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm glad to be in your presence again. I thank uh, Brother uh, Reverend Prisco Woods also for this opportunity for being here in your presence. May God richly bless you until another time. Praise God.